What's up, buds? Welcome to Weed D&D, the pot-positive live tabletop role-playing experience. I am your dungeon master, Brandon Allen McClenahan, and I hail from the fair city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Let me set this down so I don't break it. Boom. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys, and for all of your support and joining in every week. All you people on chat, seriously, it's you're the best thing in the world, and I love you. Um, it's it's a party every week. We have all kinds of fun catchphrases and stuff, and it's just seriously, you guys, it like refeeds the energy back into this show, and we all get off on it again. So thanks for getting us off. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for dealing with our technical issues as we've gone through. I mean, oh, I, oh, oh. I'm not the one who said horse board over there. Okay, I admittedly did say horse board last time. Uh, I have been corrected. It is the yoke, but. I will still keep saying horse sport because it makes me laugh. So uh, thanks so much to everybody in the community and stuff for reaching out, all the shares and likes and just like following us and subscribing over at the Art Heart Studios uh, YouTube channel and everything just like as this thing grows every day. It's just this awesome blessing to like see that this the, the signal is boosting and people are kind of digging what we're doing. Um, and uh, it's just it's such a ride for us. It's a ride for me. And genuinely, I just like I, I can't thank you guys enough for sharing this thing with uh, with uh, with all of us. And it's just such a treat to get a play. So some fucking Dungeons and Dragons with some of my favorite, most beautiful friends in the world. I love you guys. And um, I say, oh, and big shout out to our friends, d and 420, who sent me this awesome shirt. And, uh, you know, those guys are great, Jimmy and, and, the, and the Tormentor. And uh, they've, they've been really open and welcoming as we've kind of started walking into this new space. So thanks to you guys and, and everybody else uh, that we've met through this little journey. It's just it's so great to watch the, you know, our our allies grow. It's uh, it's just such a wonderful thing. So I'm all uh, high and I'm just I'm emotional apparently today. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it off uh, before I start sobbing. Uh, so I'm gonna take this thing right here and I'm gonna pass it off with one of my favorite human beings, the great Brenna Folger. How you doing, girl? <laughs> wow! Oh, hello! Oh my goodness! Hi, buds. This is so much fun. I'm having such a blast. Thank you for all the support and all the love. And uh, thank you for all being some great buds. Uh, let's keep this adventure going. I'm going to pass this over to Drew. Ah, thank you, sweetie. All right, guys. Drew, what up, buds? Thoricus Honest Heart. Man, that was so much fun the last time. I cannot wait to fight. Oh, God. Yes. Well, I need to get high, obviously, because I am way too pumped about this. So, Gus, all you, brother. First of all, I'd like to thank Drew for that introduction. My name is Gus Langley, and tonight, 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 I'm going to be playing the character of David. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your next contestant, Abby. Oh, what up, buds? Oh, thanks for that wonderful introduction, David. Oh, ten of smooth hands at your service, passing it along to Jake, ready along, ready to start this adventure this evening. Cheers. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Abby. And what's up, you beautiful buds? So good <laughs> seeing these beautiful faces again. Jake Taylor, back in the shoes of Rial Authorvon. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. We're ready. Brandon, take us home. Do it. Boom, my man. What a toast indeed. All right, buds, we have a little ritual. We like to start off our games here. Maybe you know about it, maybe you don't. And if not, you're gonna take yourself a lighter, you know, like this one here. You're gonna hold it up in front of you, possibly in front of your webcam, if you, for some reason, are also streaming this right now. And hold and go, lighters up. Let's play some fucking D&D. <laughs> All right, guys, let's say we get into this. Please allow me to set the mood. When last we left the Ferocious Five, they gathered around the great pit of the mercenary camp of Buraka. As Thoracus Onyxheart and Malka the Fury, Grand Goro of the camp, competed in the challenge of strength known as the Rakanasta. Having come to the camp in search of the blood of a Medusa to lift the curse that afflicts Divit, Riam, and Brenor, the five deceived their way through the sharp wooden gates of Buraka as Divit, 
wearing the guise of a fellow mercenary, convinced the tribe that he had brought them a great warrior. As the magical winds of the Raka blew through the camp, the two great warriors battled on a hanging wooden bridge that stretched above the pit where a legendary Medusa is rumored to dwell. Aided by the magic of his allies, Thoricus put on a grand display of strength and managed to best the primal fury of Malka in an unarmed combat. That magic, however, had an unintended consequence. As the fire summoned at the feet of Malka was spread into a towering cylinder of flames by the raging winds of the Raka that reached toward the sky and weakened the bridge that the contenders stood upon. Rather than bear the ridicule of defeat, Malka struck the smoldering bridge and cast the two into the swirling cloud of smoke that flows from the depths below. All right, guys, so this giant cylinder of flame, you know, that, that, that's been building up in front of you, the, the flames of, of Rial Othravon, his bonfire that was picked up by the, the, the raging wind of the fury, has grown and grown in the sky, so powerful that you begin to lose the image of the battle going down on this bridge over this great 50-foot in diameter stone pit. So, so strong are the flames suddenly that as you feel this large explosion, the energy shoots out in a large wave and knocks all of you back. You know, you, you land on the ground. Some of you, the more dexterous and alert, maybe land on your hand a little bit. But overall, the force wave knocks you and all the you know people in attendance back onto the ground. The air is still. The, the, the ringing in your ears, like after a bomb detonates, you hear that high tinny, you know, just... You kind of look around. It's hard to breathe. The concussive shock has knocked the air from your lungs. You know, you kind of shake yourself a bit and come to as you s start to sit up. Uh, Rial, you, you know, dexterous and fast, was was the first to catch yourself with your back hand, not so thrown back. You, you start looking around you. You see none of your friends uh, seem to be injured in any way. You see Brunor knocked back. You see Tina and Divot over uh, by where the, 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 the axe, the great axe of Malka the Fury, the Fury uh, was laying. And the one guy that was trying to throw Divot into the pit, all of them have been knocked back. Now that this great cylinder of fire is gone, you can see across the pit and you can assume that perhaps their vision was blocked. They may not know what was occurring on the other side of the swirl of fire. Now they all oh, lay back. You see several shamanastas almost uh, in the corners of each of the pit. You know, you see kind of leaned back. They're great in drums that they play on cast over onto their chest. You know, the sticks still clutched in their hands. You see they first <laughs> set the drum down in front of them before their body is even standing. Ugh, push themselves up bring the drum back up, secure the harness at their shoulders, and they begin beating the song again. Now, if you'll recall, the song had changed uh, to the, the theme of Thoricus that uh, was inspired by Brunor. So you see... The, the shamanastas seem to just be going right back, you know, into the way that things were. You see the mercenaries uh, laying on the ground near them, you know, wiping their eyes as they sit up. You know, each of their, even their bandanas and various face masks kind of blown back. You know, you see the, the foreheads and chins of a lot of guys that you haven't yet, you know, and they, they sit forward and kind of, you know, don't want anybody to see my face. Pull it down real quick, cover their mouth, and start kind of looking around, unsure as to what's really happened. Uh, the, uh, the two, however, that are over by Divot and Tina are finally like, coming to, and you can see, you know, Rial, the, 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 the moment is on you. You see that they start looking at the two of them with malice, like something's about to go down. Uh, you see that this, this explosion has only interrupted them. It hasn't stopped their purpose. So, Rial, what do you do? Am I able to uh, stealthily dart a little closer towards them? Maybe behind one of the totems that's on any of the sides of the pit? Whatever yeah, one is so, closest to them. Yes, yeah, so you know, if you can recall, there's these giant three-foot, I know it, uh, it doesn't read quite the same on the top down, but uh, there's these big giant, you know, three and four foot tall, what they look like dragon teeth, these big white polished spikes that sit up and, you know, all around <laughs> the uh, the side of, uh, of the pit. And so you, uh, you know, again, his, his attention is uh, is focused 
you know, on the two of them right now. He's not really thinking about you. Um, and so you can, you know, dodge over. Um, if you want to go ahead and give me a hide so that we can see if the rest of, you know, like you can hide from him, but will the rest of the people on the other side observe you? And now we have, no, right. I'm sorry, it's, it's a spell, not a hide. Oh, damn it. I almost got you. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. So it's all good. Uh, <laughs> God bless <laughs> okay, so in that sense, it, it's risky, but I'd rather be hidden to their attacker while the other ones are recovering, especially if I can get there quickly. I want to try and pop a shot off on at least the one that's closest to the, my buddies. Okay, so you've got, there's one directly underneath Divot that was actively, like, trying to throw him. Now, Divot won the contested athletics check and managed to shrug him off, but he seems to be the one most, like, you know what he's trying to do. He wants to get you guys in that pit too. Now the one behind Tina has not actively like been the aggressor yet. So you're not really sure what he's gonna do. Of the two, you definitely know that one near Divot means business right now. Okay, great. Does he have a name? Cause his name is now my primary target. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's bitch. He does, but you don't know it. <laughs> he owes me money. <laughs> oh, see, hell, you, know, you notice everybody has a the name here. So he's probably like, you know, the mercenary, the, ad, uh, the noun. Yes. The guy who owes me money. <laughs> he does have a name, but you don't know it yet. 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 And you will The bitch know that it. owes me money? Is it... <laughs> a mercenary is just a friend that you haven't made yet. All right, Aww. so Rial, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and dart towards him behind one of the totems and take a uh, short bow shot. Okay. Perfect. Now, since again, he's been aware of you, this is a sneak attack. Um, you, you are attacking him from him not knowing, so you have advantage, and thus you will have sneak attack on this shot. So you will do the additional damage. Uh, the additional damage. If you hit him, you got to hit the guy first. Right. <laughs> he's not too hard. You know, he's mostly garbed in like a studded leather armor. Um, you know, he's got the brown gauntlets and, and, you know, big, there's large sections of skin showing all over the place. Like I said, kind of like that Mad Max, you know, desert uh, vibe. They've got, you know, large like loincloths of leather and some of them have, you know, pulled leather pants and things. Other ones just kind of have the loincloth. So, you know, people, the way they pants. seem to accentuate themselves is with the various teeth and claws of, of enemies vanquished. You know, a lot of them have these, these braided ass, you know, uh, uh, wristbands and things that, that have various teeth hanging down and certain claws shapes on hanging off the various parts of their body. So mm -hmm. that seems to be like the style thing here. Ooh. Thank you for the fashion notes. All right, so go ahead and give me a sh oh, Boom, there it is. All right, 16 AC, mm -hmm. that is good enough. Nine damage happens to be good exactly enough. how much they have. So Rio, oh <laughs> what did you do to this guy? Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's already dead. So, <laughs> since I'm clearly one of the, uh, as you described my landing, just kind of scuffed back on the one hand, just yes. go ahead and roll forward, do a nice little uh, somersault right behind the totem, mm -hmm. bow at the ready, and right before you can see my fingers loose that arrow, right through his eye it goes. Ooh, right Ooh. through the eye, Ooh. yes. Oh, like you see Rial, you know, blown back and only, only half as the rest of you, you know, are just barely starting to sit up and rub your eyes. You see a blur of motion as Rial leaps forward and does a roll, you know, creating a perfect circle of dust as he, as he kicks it in the air around him. No sooner do his feet land that the bow reaches out like an extension of his body and you see that arrow. You know, Divot, you're standing there, uh, you know, getting kind of like looked over shoulder to shoulder with this guy, you know, getting ready to go back into a little bit of a tangle and you see an arrow just split right through his eye. It blows out the back of his head. You feel a little, little chunk of just like mush. Boop, poke out the back end as the hook blades of his bow tip poke out the back side of his head. He looks at you, you know, he's looking at you angrily as he was. You see his eyes cross. Uh, and he falls down forward, landing on the back of the arrow, pushing it even further through his head. <laughs> you see it pushes out the back as his forehead lands down on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, Rial, give me a high, a stealth check, please. Let's see if these people on the other side saw that go down. No. Oh, right through me, <laughs> that bit. No. All right, let's see here. Good work. Uh, he is so stealthy. Very stealthy. Is. This is the guy you want stealthy. He's, He's going to the bathroom right now. We don't even know. 
I don't even know who that was. Whoa! Dirty, dirty baby. Yeah. Uh, with a twenty-two. <laughs> oh. You do pretty good. Um, they are they are not actively perceiving. This is still based on their passive, and that more than conceals you. you <clears throat> you're wise enough that after you, you know, when you land and let that arrow go, again, with almost no lost motion, boom, you roll your back shoulder around and kind of press your back against the, the hooked tooth sitting out on the on the northwest side of the pit. So you, uh, oh, you know, you're kind of like leaned back, ready, already, you know, reaching for another arrow. We're going pure popcorn initiative here. So, Rial, you can choose who goes next. And remember, the uh, the bad guys are also an option. The shamanastas go and the mercenaries go together. So yeah. there's two enemy groups to consider. If you all go first, they will get a full round against you. Hmm. What do you guys think? I have an idea, but I'm thinking divot. You down? You look really optimistic right now to me, so. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Divot's down. I'm listening, but I'm taking the gold from that guy. The dead guy. He <laughs> no second wasted. <laughs> All right, so, Divot, you're up. All right. He wasn't going to pay me, so fuck him. <laughs> Taking my money with interest. All right, so you're you're technically prone right now, so you would have to, in order to move, you have to use half your movement to stand back up. Is um, he close the, enough for me to just reach? Which guy? The dead guy. The guy, dead guy in front of you. Yeah, if you want to just go ahead and straight loot him um, and be like, yeah, he owed me money, you know. Uh, yes, you, you can read him. Do you want to stay prone or do you want to get up and loot him? Um, you could stay prone. No, I, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to. I think I can stand up and then loot him. Okay. Give right? me a, so I'm allowed to do that movement wise, right? Yeah, yeah. Give me a. Uh, give me a deception here. This is again, you know. Now there's not this barrier between you and the other side. We're gonna see if this ruse draws any extra attention. All right. So um, I. I very. Mu I'm not just like looting this dead body. I'm like, uh, hey, right. That's what happens when you don't want to pay up and you owe me money. Like. <laughs> Nice. It's very, yeah. like, uh, in character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, past that person. <laughs> I'm still a la Mad Max. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. totally. You, know, you, you make sure to give him a good kick in there, too. <laughs> you kick him once. Um, a 12. So, again, uh, just to, I, I'm just to save us a little time, their passive perception in this instance is, a, is an 11, and that's what you're competing against. So you good do enough. win. With your 12, you win just, just barely. So you see the Shamanasa. Do, 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 do. She kind of looks over, you know, and you see the her dark skin with the white dots on her face. Her black braided hair is like bouncing on her face in rhythm as she puts her entire body into this drum rhythm that seems to send this almost like magical, get pumped energy around that you all witnessed and, you know, culminate in this wind of the Raka. Uh, so, yeah, you see she kind of looks over for a moment at what you're doing and then gets back into her trance a little bit. You see she just stares forward toward the pit, but not down it. Do, 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 do continues playing so divot uh if you are done it's popcorn you would decide who goes next uh, can i st can i like take a defensive position uh so with your action you would be looting him okay uh, all right so uh, but let's go ahead and do that uh so he would have he is a mercenary so i'm going to give you this could be pretty good 1d20 gold and you get what nice 18 gold you know you Damn, see he's got a nice little pouch you know, probably uh, probably got a couple contracts here recently. You know, you're digging through. He's got a small uh, hand axe at his side, you know, the kind that you've seen uh, your allies throw. You know, um, it's it's Poorly. just like that was his weapon, just a, a little hand axe. Um, and, uh, and, and yes, and a pouch with 18 gold pieces. Cool. Now, you have a bonus action if you wanted to, like, use an inspiration or anything like that. If you're done, uh, you can pass that off to uh, whoever you want. Uh, and, again, you can choose the enemies. Shit, I Am I? Can I ready a spell as a bonus action? Uh, no. Yeah, you, in order to ready a spell, you cast it as an action and then you hold on to it until a certain condition is met. Right, 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 right. Okay, then I'm good. And who are you gonna send it to first? Um, yeah, I'll send it over to uh, Brenor. Yeah, baby. Boom. So Brenor, you know, you still again, you are also prone. You see to your right, you know, there's one of the one of the mercenaries is kind of like starting to crawl over in the direction of the back of Tina Smooth Hands. Um, and you see, you know, Rial crouched up against this dragon tooth in front of you. Um, but yeah, you you can you can get up. Uh, that would cost half your movement. 
Um, and then from there, you can move as, as normal. But yeah, you, if you want to stand up, that uses 15 of your 30 feet of movement. Yeah, I want to stand up. Stand tall. Stand proud. Nice. So I'm going to stand up. Um, and <laughs> Shamanasta to your left. You know, she's okay, playing. Yeah. You can see her there. Um, she's not uh, of the people that are privy to your actions. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but she is... Um, She's playing Thor Kisses song. We're playing like, like that's happening. Yes, that's um, the one you convinced to start this song. Yay! Okay, so that's that's yeah. already going on. Um, I kind of want to continue shouting Thor Kiss to like get people, like get the other mercenaries to shout it, like yeah, like turn the whole thing around because I want them to all root for him at the same time. <laughs> all right. So, you, do you want to persuade them? To root with you? Do you want to try to intimidate them to root with you? What 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 action do you want to do? You want to lie? Uh, you know what I mean? Like what? I want to. So so okay, gotcha, gotcha. So um so in like the fury of everything, you know, I, I kind of notice that they just kind of follow whatever the shamanasta starts doing. They so, recognize strength. Yeah. So so I want to like I have my my I want to take out. Oh, that's an action. I want to like take my shit out and be like, Thor, because like like chanting like even harder like yeah like trying to get the other guys to do it like I'm okay, so that would be pers- I would say persuasion yeah, yeah, yeah. Persuade- so go ahead and give me a persuasion check um, I will allow I mean it's the free it takes you uh, a uh, an action to don your shield but right. your sword you could pull out as a free action okay, so cool, yeah, you know, and your own, you know, the, the gleaming yeah. blade this yep. elvish this gorgeous elven blade emblazoned with green arcane runes yep. <laughs> again moving you know with at, at the edge of your will just <laughs> As you think it, so too does the sword move. Right. And you bring it out. And at the sight of it, even, you see, like, some of the guys as they're oh, standing up. They see this sword. Oh. And you start, <laughs> Thoracus, Thoracus. And with your <laughs> seven, you see the, that they're, uh, you know, they, they seem unfazed by your inspiration. Now, the song is still playing. There's yeah. no ill effects from that. But your your appeal to their uh, to their nature uh, to to change sides and, and root against Malka mm-hmm. has failed. You see, they're like, they look Aww. at you as, as you start screaming Thoracus. And even though, you know, they're still kind of on the ground and, and weary, they start, Malka, Rocky, Nasta, Rocky, Nasta. And you see they start uh, slowly lifting their bodies up, but not until they're turned an initiative, officially. Right. Well, shucks. So your uh, your attempt, you know, a, a wise idea, you know, that could have, uh, who knows how that could have played out in your favor. Um, unfortunately, the dice turned up. It didn't. They so. have been. <laughs> they're so mean. They're yes. mad at me uh, now. Yes. You, uh, <laughs> you have to appease the roll 20 dice gods. There are various rituals. Make those yeah. dice happy. Yes. yes, make the dice happy. Shucks. Every time All I right. roll the dice when we're not playing, I get a crit. Every time. I'm going to take a picture of it next time. It's it's like every You're so time. full of shit. Oh my gosh. Scroll up in chat. You can even say, we don't need to do this now. You guys don't need to do this now. It's Look, fine. Fucking, scroll mm-hmm. up in chat. Scroll okay. up. Scroll okay. up to see what the last <laughs> roll for me was before I see you this mission. I see it you. Ain't green. Tell me it ain't green. Yes. All right. Mom, Dad, stop fighting. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Don't worry. Right. Let me turn like this adventure fun. around. All right. Um, <laughs> where's the horse sport? Give me the horse sport, Isaac. <laughs> horse All right. Sport. So, um, awesome. So you are done. Uh, whose yeah. turn is next? It's- well, no, you could still move. You could still move. Uh, and you have a bonus action if you wanted to do anything with it. Cool. Um, oh. Yeah, okay, then uh, if they're starting to be dorks about it, I'm going to take my hand axe out and I want to throw it at the guy that's coming up on Tina. <laughs> okay, so you use, unfortunately, you used your action, so you only have a bonus action left. Um, so, but yes, mm-hmm. you can, you can like, pull your hand axe out and have it ready. Yeah. Can she action, action surge? Now, you know what you could do? Um, again, just because I know that the, the way the framing on this is a little weird. You have, if you stand up, which you already did, you have 15 yeah. feet of movement still. What okay. you could do, since you're a protection warrior, you could move here, here, and there. Use your 15 feet like that. And yeah. then if this guy moves away from you, you'll get an attack of opportunity on him. Yep, I won't. Yep, you're right. So, That's you know, what I pull want. up protector instinct. Protector, you know, yep, yep, yep. And, oh, I see, uh, I see, yeah, yeah. You start running up. Even though you don't have your shield at the ready, you know, you're ready to uh, to, to help, to aid Tina, who, mm-hmm. you know, you guys have a, a strong bond. You see her in danger, um, and, and you begin to act. Oh, so, uh, Brenna, you, Brenna, you are done, so you pick who goes next. Tina. Yo, smooth hands. Smooth hands. Tennis smooth hands. Tennis smooth hands. Now you. Oi. 
<laughs> He's dead. He's dead. Now, is I this guy, is he actively coming at me, or is he just looking angry at me? No, he's prone, What's his um, but he is actively, like, you know... What's he, his he, temperature? If you remember, <laughs> if you remember that before, um, uh, when you guys were getting knocked over, he was already alert to you, and you were <laughs> holding a spell that was going to be, that you could discharge if he attacked you, yep. but because of being knocked prone, you've now lost concentration on that sacred flame. Right. So you know he's coming for you. You've kind of instinctually kept your back to him. So he's not really, he doesn't know what you're going to do, but he is laying prone, you know, just over your shoulder about 10 feet back. Okay, cool. So I don't want to start everything. I don't want to pull the pin on everything right now. So I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up from being prone. Okay. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make my way to him and I'm going to cast Charm Person on him. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, okay. And (laughs) I'm your friend, man. I'm not trying to. Go ahead and cast it. Yeah. Just uh, again, this we're trying. I know I'm certainly any game, any of you that play D and D are very familiar with Charm Person, but some of you guys, this is like your first D and D ride. So this spell, Charm Person, pretty awesome. Um, again, anytime we try to use a new spell or something, I will kind of uh, just explain. Uh, so you attempt to charm a humanoid that you can see within range. He makes a Wisdom saving throw, and he does so with advantage if you or your companions are fighting it. Which right now, none of you guys actively are. Brenor did not attack; she's just set up for defense. So uh, if it fails the saving oh, oh. throw, it's charmed by you until the spell ends. The charmed creature regards you as a friendly acquaintance, and when the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. Mm. So he will know when this spell is over, if if he doesn't pass his saving throw, which I'm going to give him right now. He doesn't have a great wisdom, but sometimes they roll hot. Here we go. Let's roll it. Uh, that's not good enough, not with your uh, your dope new wisdom. Uh, 12 fails your uh, your spell DC, so oh, yeah. he is charmed by you. So, Tina, go ahead and, you know, we've Who never cast the spell. I mean, what does it look like when you charm someone? I'm your friend, my good man. We're coming through. We seek to heal ourselves. I'm not here to fight you today. You God see, he damn, that was charming. Looking down, you know, and the camera comes into his his perspective, and he looks down at this halfling priestess reaching out to him. You know, the kind of brown, golden hair and gleaming eyes. You know, uh, pretty virtuous uh, for someone with such a dark past. You know, um, and you see as he's looking at you, and as the words are coming from your lips, and he's watching them, these waves start. <laughs> And suddenly you see he like looks at you and he goes from a confused stare to kind of a dopey smile. Oh, <laughs> it's good to see you again, friend. Oh. <laughs> and you see he's, you know, he's, he's trying to stand up. He doesn't really like, he's not like really aware of why he's prone, but he's like trying to get up to greet you. He seems excited to, to uh, <laughs> I knew you'd recognize me. <laughs> Oh, man. And he, again, he can't stand up because it's not his turn in initiative yet. But uh, when he can, he will stand up. So he's just kind of dusting himself off, yeah, clearly you know. putting all his weight on one arm, like, I'm going to get up, but it's not my turn in initiative yet, so here you go. <laughs> um, but yes, you have successfully charmed this person, verbal somatic component. Surprise, so, yeah. surprise. That's all right, funny. so you have charmed, and you have uh, a person who regards you as a friend. Cool. And uh, so perfect. Did you you uh, you used half your move, but you still have the rest of your move if you were so inclined to use it, and you also have a bonus action. Um, I think that's all I want to do. I think that'll be the end of my turn. Um, Sweet. Who so shall where... I popcorn to, guys? What do you think? Oh no no, Tenna. Oh no no. Oh. That's that's part of the thrill of the popcorn. Uh, okay, um, I'm gonna let them go. All right, which them? I like it. Groups. There's the shamanastas okay. and there's the mercenaries. The shamanastas. All right. So currently, the none of the shamanastas are um, are currently engaged aggressively. So oh. what they're going to do is make a performance check with advantage. And Thoricus, this may work out to your advantage. Oh, I doubt it. I hope so. Let's do to this. One. Fourteen, so not good enough. Um, but you see, they all—you know—each of them who had stood and you know reset their drum and began playing. Now you see, rather than three separate songs, the the, the timing beats of them all start to 
line up, and it's less of a cacophony of drums and more a precision, almost drum line of this swelling, beating energy. And with each strike on the pulled tan leather on these drums, the concussive burst that comes off the top of it, you feel inside yourself. It's like you know, all of you in this moment are, are almost called to this this new rambunctious energy that's just bubbling up within you. You know, you have now witnessed the raka, and you would assume that this is some side effect of their you know devotion to to this energy. Um, so yes, the 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 shamanastas do not attack aggressively, um, and so they will now pass it to the mercenaries. So we're gonna get a couple perception checks here. <laughs> These are active because they are looking. So and there's quite a few coming. So I'm just gonna work from left to right. Here we go. A blaze oh, of That's a fail with a five. That's a fail with a four. Uh, here we go. We'll keep going. Uh, that's an eight. That's a fail. That's only a ten. Um, Fifteen is the DC we're looking for. I'm rolling like garbage right now. Um, no way. See, that's one, two, three, four, five. Look, the Thoric is his world. <laughs> I hate how many times he's rolling. 11. I know. I don't want to start fighting. 13. None of them beat a 15. Yes! Yo! Dig it! It's great. It's fine. That's totally Truly, fun. we are blessed. I was going to talk about it. That's how I was. <laughs> Is that, that means I'm critting you. I'm going to crit your brains out later. Just no. remember. Just because it's coming. Crit face. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. I'm not upset. Everything's fine. No, it's fine. Uh, all right. So all of these mercenaries on the other side, you know, each of them standing from prone. You see they're, you know, wiping the dust. You see great, you know, that that powdered red and, you know, brown clay that the ground is here. You see it kind of leaves like a heavy dust that falls off them as they, you know, knock themselves, realign their, you know, character specific bandana styles and mouth guards and you know the various plates of leather that that accentuate them from the other one um but they all start just kind of you know dusting themselves off and looking around you know what they see when they look across is simply one of the mercenaries smiling at a little halfling priestess Rial is pretty much tucked behind this giant dragon tooth brenor is just standing there not attacking anybody. And Divot is, you know, going through this bag of coin that he rightfully should, you know, if that dude owed you money, yeah. he's getting back. So get your money. Your rules has worked for yet another round. And uh, fantastic. So let's finish this to our final person. I know Tina went. Um, so that's all that's left is the other scene. So. If oh, you man, guys, oh, we're not we supposed go. to know about this, right? Yes. Yeah, so through the magic, through the magic of the internet, ah. we uh, <laughs> we join snakes. I'm scared. Snakes. I hate pit. snakes. You know, you, the, the last thing you remember, Thoracus, was reaching up and breathing in this thick marble smoke. Um, that, uh, yeah, that you know, this, this dusty mist cloud that grows out of the pit, and as you you know reach out, as the gravity, like riding a roller coaster, just <gasps> causes you to still you know, gulp in. You breathe in this heavy smoke into your lungs. <clears throat> you cough as you reach out and throw one of these at your party on the way down the smoke. You <clears throat> land on the ground. <clears throat> that great dust of smoke <clears throat> blows out of your mouth. <clears throat> Took the fall damage. You hear the bang. <clears throat> Let's go. Of Malka the Fury, <sighs> you hear the the sound of snakes echoing all around you as the sound bounces off of the stone-hewn walls of this large, dark room. This breeze of of marble smoke and fog makes it hard to distinguish around you. But as you lay on the ground again, prone, you uh, start looking around. You see great statues of men in various states of battle. One man with his axe at his side as if, you know, a, a move you're very familiar with, bringing it from downtown. You know, his axe mid-swing seems to be frozen in this moment in stone. And, and you, you, you know, as you wipe away the, the, the cloud of smoke that chokes at your lungs, you start looking around through the haze and kind of waving away white puffs of smoke and dust. You hear the sh 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 echoing all around you. 
more and more. You're, you're not sure where its source is, but you know it's close and far at a moment. It seems to be moving with great speed around you. You hear Malchus breathing <sighs> on the ground. Suddenly, you hear another voice. <clears throat> you kind of turn over your back left shoulder and you see over a pile of stone rubble with a stone skeleton cast in it. You see giant bites of where flesh used to be frozen in stone as this figure is kind of curled back in a frozen display. And over it, you see one of the mercenaries from above that must have fallen down uh, in the midst of this combat for whatever reason. Definitely wasn't pushed down here by Brenor, if anybody asks. Um, but... But you see this guy, oh, you know, who, who's taken the brunt of the fall. You know, you you don't know exactly how far, but you fell, you know, roughly a, uh, a you know an amount of uh, of about twenty feet. And so you, uh, oops, sorry. And so you, uh, you, you know, you look around. You see as he's like kind of clawing himself. The whole back end of his body has been ripped off and like slashed with like great shreds and cuts. It looks just like little bits and trails of him as he's like crawling. And you see him as he crawls forward, and his fingers seem to dig in the in the, the stone, you know, the, the hard mud round of the of the pit. He is pulling himself forward, and you can see like his intestines and organs dragging out behind him but so terrified is he that that mechanically he continues to fight forward to spare his life as you look over your back shoulder you feel the soft pale blue light emanate from this direction and before you can turn you see the man dragging himself on the ground looks up right into the bath of blue energy and it washes over his skin and you see as the light fades from you know, glowing his body, his fingers <laughs> begin turning to stone. <laughs> you see the look on his face, terrified, as he begins to claw at his own hands as his body <laughs> is frozen. You see him, his face, forever in this haunting glimpse of whatever is on the other side of you right now. You feel, feel the soft blue. You know, you're no fool. You know the Medusa is near. You hear hissing around at the back. Oh my god. You see Malka. <laughs> oh, come to me. It is time we fought. Dwarf. It was my father that brought this peace to us, and it is in his name that we compete for glory. May Baintooth long live forever. I advise you, as you hear him kind of standing up, have your wits about you, warrior. And you see he reaches back and again, you know, all of his vascular, all the, the veins in his, in his rippling green gray body starts swelling. You see his whole form like grows out like a legit like half inch in all directions. And you see the, the you know, the white parts of his eyes fill with this fiery red energy. His spikes sticking out and forward as you see him come down and blast his shoulders. He seems to be staring straight at the ground, but with no weapon, he just is reaching out with his fists in some sort of defensive stance. He popcorns the turn to you. Oh, to me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, damn. Uh. Yeah. Sorry, I was. That was some really good storytelling. I was lost <laughs> in that shit. Jesus. Oh, uh, not do that yet. No, uh, no bullshit. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. So we land. I hear the thing. I see the guy freeze. That's he what you're flexes. looking at right now. You feel that? Yeah. Like you've got him here. You feel that presence over your back, right? You know she's back there. You know you don't know exactly where because you're not looking. Maybe for the best. And you know you feel that energy presence behind you. You saw the pale blue glow shine from over your shoulder. And then you know you kind of like look over this way and you see Malka. <laughs> body 
he's shaking. You know, spits and saliva starting to bubble at the at the tips of his. You know, he's got that big underbite. You see saliva start dripping down from the corners. He seems to be going into a rage. You know, you as a warrior have met other barbarians in your life. This is a a, a battle form for the, the the barbarian class. He goes into a, this furious rage and uh, gets, grants himself many advantages, but also betting some serious disadvantages at the same time. Right. So. Yeah, he's in a full out rage. But again, he's staring down at the ground. Just okay. waiting in a defensive stance. Now it's me. Okay, sorry. Whole lot of weed. Uh right. Uh, focus. Um <clears throat> Okay. So he's ready to go. He's ready to get at this, right? Okay, well then I'll just simply say, we've done this before! We're down here now because of you! If we want to do this again, we can do this! He sees, uh, you know, suddenly he shifts his body over toward you. <sighs> then let's dance! Dwarf! And he leaps forward, and we return back to the top of the pit. <laughs> You know, in that moment, we switch back, and you hear the, the beating drums of the rock and Asta. Um, we have jumped back. They have, we've popcorn back to the very beginning of the initiative, which is Real going to be you. Shit. I'm <laughs> kind of kinda hard to <laughs> go back to the top of the pit. So you hear this down in the pit. You know, you're, you're, you're wise enough not to necessarily stare directly down, um, but you know there's kind of like a fog and a smoke there that kind of conceals what you can see. So, um, But you do hear this, you know, you hear these great warriors, the screams of Malka the Fury, you know, in, in a great rage, and the, and the competing cry of Thor and Exotic's heart, you know, contending him in battle. You know, you feel like, oh man, I'm missing out on another really dope moment right now. And so you're up there, back pressed against the uh, the giant dragon's tooth. What do you do? It's not the best cover, but I'm gonna just try and remain hidden, try and keep this uh, use my stealth to the uh, advantage at this point. Okay, so um, go ahead. You can just move to, if you move to the other side of the of this pillar. If you like, it's kind of counterintuitive, but if you would move forward, you'd be blocked by this thing. Um, so, go. you know, you're uh, you're still, you're, you are you want to just maintain that 22 stealth, right? So you just, by not yeah. acting out of it, you're still, you know, you kind of quickly, you know, roll to the ground and out of the, the vision of them and slide up to the next dragon tooth along the way. You know, you're, you're much closer to the Shaman Asta and you can feel that just echoing, you know, you feel your lungs shaking with each strike of the drum. All right, so uh, Rial, who are you passing it to? Oh gosh, let's see. Let's go, Tina. Oh, Tina smooth hands. Oh, jeez. Tina smooth hands. Tina smooth hands. Tina doesn't know what she wants to do. Yes. Admittedly, oh. one of the uh, the downfalls of the popcorn initiative is you don't yes. know when you're on deck, so it's uh, but it does. It, it's kind of like that that surge is is part of the fun. But the mm -hmm. marijuana helps, so... The marijuana helps yes. a lot. Yes, yes. As it does with <laughs> and food and I think I'm in a place exactly. similar to Real. I don't want to blow our cover. So Okay, and remember, like... you have your friend, you know, you're staring up, you still kind of, you almost have your hand, you know, at the lower part of his shoulder. You're like, I'm your friend, you know, like giving him the eyes. And he's like, ah, yeah, you know, he's managed to stand up at this point. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't give him a turn in initiative, so what would you, do you want to have him do anything for you right now? Like, he's your friend, it's, you don't have yeah, control, yeah. you're not like pulling his puppet strings, if I could but you could suggest him to him something as a friend, and he would oh. respond, respond kindly. Or if like you wanted him to do something that a friend would ask another friend to do, he would probably be inclined to do so. Yeah, um, hey friend, do you know what would be really cool? If we all started chanting Thoracus right now. Oh, the dwarf, <laughs> the dwarf, right, the dwarf. Yeah, let's right. cheer for him. His name is Thoracus. 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 He starts dancing with you, cheering up. You know, he uh, he uh, you, you know, he starts taking the vibe. You know, he gets your hint. You know, we want to turn. We want to get the other guys. You know, like when you're in a, a sports game, you want to you want to beat the other dudes out. So he starts moving by. Now Brenor, he does move through your threat range. <laughs> 
Yeah. So if you did want to attack him, you can. But, no. you know, you feel that itch trigger like... finger on it. And Jarrell's like, hey, should I do this? And, uh, but you see he walks, he's done. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. Starts chanting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he's just kind of moved over. Um, cancel here, sorry. Uh, boom, moved up to kind of be uh, in sight of some of the guys on the other side. He's like clearly cheering for your side in the battle. So far, no no aggression shown uh, on their part. So, sweet, yeah. Uh, and then, Tenna, did you have anything else you wanted to do with your... And can I accent that with my thaumaturgy? Yes, you can. Cool. So, thaumaturgy, you know, one of... It has many... Uh, ooh, I just threw my joint. Um, it has many, you know, features that you can use. Um, which one are you going? You want the, the booming voice? The booming voice. All right, so you... Of his or for your own? My own. Okay. So, uh, you, uh, you, you know, Thoricus, Thoricus, you start screaming and shouting, and the, you know, the, the mercenary walking around that's shouting with you, the, the, the swell kind of starts to turn, and you see, uh, two of the guys on the opposite side, these, these dudes right here, start also chanting, Dwarf, 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 Dwarf. <laughs> And they're, you know, they're uh, they're not as, uh, really? as, you know, in tune racially as the party. Okay. And they just shout out for the dwarf, who they have been impressed by at this point. You know, okay. they saw Malka get bent down. They saw, you know, and it's, again, in this culture that respects strength. You know, you can see as the, you know, where they were all cheering and rooting for Malka, the song, the, the beating drums that you heard on your way here, his, his strength and ritual. You know, as, uh, as basically you've turned the tide at this point. You see... Um, you know, about half of the crowd, including you guys, is cheering for Thoricus at this moment, and the other half of the crowd uh, continues to, you know, cheer for Malka, their their grand dwarf. So, uh, good move, Tina. Where would you like to send that magic? Um, I'm gonna send it back to Drew. All right. Yeah. Boom. We're jumping back in. Allow me to. This is a little rustier than I'd like it. Wait, no, wait. Just about... You can't, you can't beat that kind of stuff. All right, so uh, <laughs> that's that was just, that's I'm sorry. Hi, that was cool. Um, boom, you know, we can that. do that. We can throw it to people in different in the different uh, encounters. Yes. Okay. So, cool. Cool. Um, cool. Cool. And, uh, cool. 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 So, Thoricus, you're standing there, both you and Malka. I'm going to say, you know, in that little moment, you both birth toward each other. So you're you're fighting, you know, again, not not like actively looking around you. As you hear this echoing sound of this Medusa, you know, going around, uh, a bit of a terrifying, you know, legendary monster that, you know, you're just so pumped up. You still have the rock up flowing through you. You can feel that, that fire in your lungs, that that cool breeze that blows through your body. You know, you, you, the breeze yeah. makes me feel fine. And you're all like, <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, it's exactly like that, except you, uh, you, you know, with the better popcorn first, you get to choose how do you want this to go down. Are you like fist to cuffs? Are you gonna like punch fight this dude? Um, are you gonna attempt to grapple and pin him? Um, do you want to, uh, you know, it's 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 your turn. You, you have the Stop full use. Giving me through. so many options. Mm. Yeah, sorry. holy shit. I'm getting a little flat mouthy. No, I'm just like, I want to do all of those things. <laughs> don't we? Don't we all want to do all of the things? Jeez. Yeah. Right. Um. I I guess, truthfully, in my heart, what I want to do is just not. I, I mean, I I want to fight so bad, but that is not what that is not what we came here to do. So. I've already embarrassed him in front of this whole damn tribe. We fell into this pit. I want the Medusa to know. Bitch, be cool. This ain't about you. Malcolm, this ain't about you. This ain't about me. This is about something bigger than all of us, but all of us together. I want to kind of put that vibe out there. (laughs) Whatever means necessary to kind of... Yeah, so that to happen. Let's just clarify your intention. Are you trying to get the great Malk of the Fury to not fight you right now? I feel like that's an impossibility. It's not. It's absolutely not. <laughs> no, I, I will. But, I will assuage you of that. It, it is. Everything is simply in Dungeons and Dragons. Everything is a matter of rules. So that, you know, everything's I, possible. 
But I'm just, I, I just, I just want to be clear of your intent because I don't want to speak for you. Are you, are you just trying to calm the situation, like put your hands up and be like, "Yo, bro, I ain't trying to fight you," or are you gonna like try to like persuade him or intimidate him or you know what I mean, like use one of your skills? To get <coughs> I adjusted? actually, if if I was gonna use any sort of skill like that, I guess it would be intimidation, just because I did kick the shit out of him when the bridge was up there, mm. where okay. the used to be bridge was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's in the before right. times. Right. <laughs> in the up there moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> down All here. Right. So just basically trying to haunch him again, just be like, I beat you up there, I'll beat you down here. Yes, like bro, if you if give you me an intimidation. This, give me an intimidation. You do this. Yeah, yeah. You'll do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't oh, want to do that with you again. So again, you know, Malka the Fury has explicitly said he, 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 this is a strength based society. Even he, in his Malka the Fury Literally grand nice. or the grand Goro, has to recognize that you, this four foot five, you know, built like a brick shit house little dwarf, just like manhandled him. Oh! Um, Crit! Crit hit, everybody. We have another little ritual. We, we take a hit on a crit around these parts, baby. Because Thoricus Onisar just intimidated the crap out of Malka. Um, while I hit this, Drew, give me this, give me this moment. I want to hear, I want to see this intimidation. You earned it. It's critical. And you make this moment. Damn, and then, son. Go, baby. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, of course, right now, this this would be the moment that my computer decides to do weird things. But yes. let's just hope that it all goes through. It's Look getting I'm, stoned with I us. I still see you, baby. It's taking a hit, too. Taking that ass? Taking mm -hmm. that ass. All right. Um, so, again, the whole vibe that I was trying to put out there is, look, you want strength, I've shown you strength. My, my people that you don't know shit about have shown you strength. If you want to see more, we got it all damn day. We can do this. That's not what we're here to do. We are here to save my friends, get the damn curse off of us, make the sun, not the sun anymore, maybe a little moon action. Like, <laughs> you know, find this, like, Ergon synthesis combination thing, the syndicate, losing family, a bit. family shit. I know I'm, I'm babbling, I'm babbling, I'm babbling. Uh, uh, you, you, in, the, in the beginning, uh... I, I, the stuff in the beginning, yes, I understand. You see, he's still, you know, he's pretty raged up. Uh, he's kind of almost like fighting this, like, urge to just surge toward you. But with your, you know, and again, uh, crits don't work on skill checks. Whatever, you nat 20 that. We all smoked, and it's a dope moment. I'm happy you crit. I'm and your other roll was a 23 so. anyway, so you, you double dub that. And so, uh, yeah, you see he... Ooh, a little bit of calm comes to his face, you know, a little bit like the the, the, the Hulk in the sweater in the Avengers movie where he's like kind of <laughs> calm in the face. He like, uh, his face calm, body still like Hugh Jackman in all the Wolverine movies, vascular and ripped, his face calm and, and focused. He looks at you. What stories would they tell about Malka without the fury, the dwarf without his lady, as they tore apart a Medusa limb from limb? <laughs> Let's stand together, dwarf. Let's kill this beast that my father brought. You can have all the blood you need. <laughs> it is your the end of your turn, unless you want to make a move or use a bonus action. Um, but it is your turn to, to hand as you will. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's... That is... I, that is so mean spirited. I, I, I feel hurt. Jesus. All oh. right. Uh. So you still have the uh, Shamanastas, the Mercenaries, Brenor, and Divot. Are your options? So mean spirited. <laughs> you know what? I need some good times, Divot. That's 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 you, buddy. Okay. Oh, Jesus, uh, that was rough. I I I see. Okay. I see everyone, uh, like, uh, doing the Thoricus thing and a couple of people doing the Malka thing. Yeah, right? mostly on the far side, yeah. Like, right, the guys kind of closer to you seem to be kind of drifting towards your side. It, it, it just worked out that way, but yes. But nobody is giving any attention to the lady of the hour. Uh, and I want to loudly start screaming this, so this song that I know about how 
She was so beautiful, none could see. Like uh, uh, the lady that we all wish that we could be. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I want her to feel the love too. I don't I I don't want being her to feel down. Like she has to attack. You're talking about you are trying to sing a song and give some uh, some love and and compassion to the Medusa in this spiked stone pit. Oh, her. Is that correct? Okay. Is that the her? Yes. Is that the her? <laughs> yes. I was confused because I was like, I all right, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to see a performance check. Oh God. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Fingers crossed. This would be the, the time. Dice. The dice. I'm with you. I think this is a beautiful moment. <laughs> Ah, unfortunately, as as grand as you may, you see oh, that the, the song that you sing is beautiful, and and your your idea, you know, you see kind of your allies hear it, but so powerful are the beating, ferocious drums of the shamanastas oh. of Buraka that the the song does not carry over these concussive waves that literally knock your words out of the sky. So you see the song, you know, you as a bard can can visualize the the magic energy of your songs. You watch as the clouds of magical energy get swatted out of the sky. All right, so you have a move and a bonus action, um, or it is uh, either between Brunor or the other people. Um, <clears throat> no, I'll just, uh, like, join back in the chanting. Dorcas, Dorcas. Can you not, like, do this while you're <laughs> Warwick? Rub a fist, Dorcas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Divot, so uh, who are you throwing it to? <laughs> um, I will throw it. You said the Shamanastas are still on the table? Shamanastas, Mercenaries, Malka the Fury, and Brenor. I'll give it up to them. To the Shamanastas? Yes. Okay. So again, the uh, Shamanastas having not been uh, drawn into the Fury of Battle, you know, you see the uh, the third one basically finally gets in line, this continuous swallowing drum song that uh, will reach down. You know, Thoricus, you hear it as you know, as, as the, the, the they all synergize and begin to drum together. That energy wave... <laughs> is pushing down into the well. And you see the energy of each drum strike starts blowing small clouds of dust around you. And you can kind of see a little bit better around you. So it's like it is actually providing you both a little bit of visual clarity um, and you're feeling that, you know, that, that rock swell inside of you. You know, currently. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yes, this, uh, your guys is uh, basically, oh, yeah. your plan was to get these people on your side. You've succeeded as far as the shaman asses are. Um, the, uh, they, she will then throw it to the mercenaries. Now, all of the mercenaries, again, right now are, are not hostile and none of you are exhibiting hostile tendencies. Um, you see one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the mercenaries that had turned to, to your side, you know, dwarf, dwarf, dwarf. You see, you know, he's a big, great, massive buff guy. He's got like kind of a sharp red mohawk that sits behind him. He kind of looks like Thoricus, like a little bit like a, like a human jack version of Thoricus. He reaches out and he's got a little brown bandana that sits over and he's dwarf, dwarf, dwarf. And as he looks down, you see this pale blue light wash over his face. And he's like, dwarf, dwarf. And you see his body start getting covered as like spreading brain ran Oh no! Running oh. Into his body. And he freezes, reaching out, fist out. You know, you look around at some of the skeleton statues and various other, you know, uh, bodies that are around. Many other statues frozen in a similar way. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, one of your uh, one of your fans has uh, has has gone and turned himself to stone. Oh, that, was, that wasn't the charmed one, was it? Nope. No, that was okay. uh, somebody on the far side here. The charm oh. guy's on your side. Oh. Um, and he's Very going to kind of continue um, moving. Again, Rial, same thing. He's going to walk right past your threat range, if you were so inclined. Um, and then he gets on the other side of the Shamanasta and uh, begins shouting Thorgus at these two right here. You know, the shout uh, from Alka the Fury. They're both going to, uh, to, to take their check here and see if they are swayed. 
one of them is, the other is not. So, ah. you know, you see this this one here. I'll kind of move him over towards you. This group right here, entirely shamanastas, and these two mercenaries are with you guys. They're even, Yay. like, turning and looking at you now. Thoric! Ah. And they're, they're singing in tune, Thoricus, you know, not the dwarf that pierces from the other side. Of the, uh, of <laughs> Thank you. Guy. It's like, even though his friend has turned to stone, he's still like, dwarf, 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 because, you know, he's committed. Um... But yes, so the uh, the mercenaries, you see them all, the, the even the ones that aren't swayed, they move toward the rim of the pit, but not to stand on the edge and look down so foolishly as their as their friend and ally just did. Um, you know, maybe perhaps the, the swelling winds of the Raka allowed the this trapped Medusa to see outside and capture one of the observers. You know, you all kind of, you know, take, take your eyes a little bit away from the pit in that moment. Um... All right, and so that is the mercenaries. They are done. Uh, Brenor, you're up. Yay! Um, I want to make my way around to the where the bridge was, like where it's hanging down, because I want to kind of shimmy my way down there. All right. I'm going down. Aww. Funny. All right, so there's, you know, hanging down, and it's, it's, the perspective is a little strange there. I would yeah. say about 10 feet of the bridge, which is about how much movement you have left, um, is how much is hanging down. You know, you, you're, again, you're, you're, not, you're not wanting to look directly down. Yeah. Um, so give me, um, give me an athletics check. As you, you know, you come over on the other side, you put your foot down on, on a piece of, uh, of burnt wood, and, pff, you know, it, it, it shoots out from under your foot. You start to fall, and you catch yourself with one arm, mm-hmm. pull yourself back up, and then slowly begin the descent. So cool. you are actually basically right here, but you, you're, you're 10 feet down. So yeah. as you you know as you reach the end of your movement you know again kind of cautious of looking too far down you kind of look down the wall that you're you know leaned up against mm-hmm. and you, you you can see the outlines of a ground you know and some rubble and rock on the ground so you you would imagine you're about 15 feet above the ground and you too hear the <laughs> echoing chatter of of this shaping sound that bounces off the walls and echoes in all directions. Oh, so it's <laughs> All right, so Bruno, you're done. Boom, passing over to my man, Malka the Fury. Boom, we rejoin him down in this in this pit. Ah, you see, he's swelling, you know, seemingly getting as jonesed up on the uh, on the old uh, Raka as 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 uh, I'm sorry, as Thorcus is in this moment. <sighs> All right, queen of of snakes, let's see what you've got. And you see, he's like, he continues staring at the ground, but starts just swinging and running in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> like, he like, runs over your head. Okay, so like, you're like worried for a second that he's going to swing and hit you. And he just starts swinging forward. He can't see, so he's averting his eyes, which is something you can do, uh, which gives him, he can't see, even if she's there, he can't see him. And he begins to run 5, 10, 15, 20, boom, and he, unfortunately not finding true, her not being in that region, you hear the, the chattering snakes echoing around, and uh, and he, you hear Malka punch the stone wall. Come out, snake queen, face your destiny. That is the end of Malka the Fury's turn. In response, you hear the echoing bite of this echoing sound and then you feel as the, the chattering snake sounds all seem to focus to a yep. point your head oh. you can do that with the audio you so. hear Malka run up and, and uh, suddenly what the ah! and you hear as, as he's just seemingly torn into you hear great slashing sound oh. the hiss ah <laughs> You fools! As she slashes into him. For let's see how much damage. Please be a lot. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> come scroll up. Everything is great and I'm doing the roll twilight dance. Here we go now. Here we go now. Alright, boom! Claw and the snake hair, both with advantage because he cannot see her. Both. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, no, both are hits. One with a 24 AC and a 19 AC. He suffers, I'm not going to tell you, he suffers quite a bit of damage. Dang. Um, all right, so he is not feeling fantastic. Uh, Thoricus, again, you can't see him. This all happened over the back of your shoulder. But you know, based on that cry and that sound, that there is indeed 
a, uh, a figure, you know, shh, you can feel the, the rattles, the, the echoing snake sounds around you. Shh, oh, and then suddenly you I hear Malka, oh, yeah, no! You see the flash of the blue, pale light. Shh, as the echoing sound, you fool, shh, continues. And you hear Malka, no! And you hear the crushing, crumbling sound and the echoing six snake sounds. And you got massive, massive presence. Just this evil energy behind you. And you feel its rage shift. And like a hot sun on the back of your shoulders, you feel the heat of its breath. You feel the individual shakes of, of each of the individual snakes of the legendary Medusa's hair. And then we pick it up and we come back from You break. mother... All right, man. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Ooh, I'm scared. Uh, we are going to take us a little bit of a break. We're going to take it... Uh, hang out, man. That we, that all of Sandy Stein's music is... It will just inspire you to create and do wonderful things. Listen to all of it. Um, fan art submissions from Gabe and Vlad and Ben and just all these great artists that have made these wonderful things that we just can't wait to incorporate into Gunjari and into our world and we love all these artists we love all our actors we love all of you guys in chat and watching on YouTube and all this stuff just stay with us we're going to take us a little break have a potty break short rest couple hit dice and we'll be back to continue the saga I don't like it we're in
this thing is old and probably clogged. But welcome back, buds. Oh, my goodness. Things were getting a little, uh, I don't want to break this. Uh, we're getting a little crazy uh, when, when we left out of there. Some of that good old, good old fashioned D&D &D like Mama used to make. We are going to jump right back in. So when last we left the Ferocious Five, we, you know, Thoricus stood in the base of the pit of Buraka as he felt the swirling presence of the looming ancestral, you know, legendary ancestral monster of the Medusa, you know, the energy behind him at his back, hearing his semi-ally, Malka the Fury, crying out as it sounded like stone over began to overtake him. Uh, coming up now to the top of the pit, you know, the, the gathered on either sides, the song the Shamanas is playing in in, in, uh, in praise of Thoricus, you know, the beating drum melody, this mm -hmm. this noble driving song. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 do. You know, in the swelling moment is the breeze of the Raka. You know, once again, starting to culminate and drive around. You feel the hair blowing back. You see the, the tattered, you know, the, the hanging vests and stuff and cloaks blowing in the wind. The bandanas on people's faces flapping. You know, you smell the uh, some of the, you know, the, the air carries some of the dankness from the murk wood, and you smell dankness on the wind. And, uh, and, and it just kind of starts blowing around. And even though it's a hot day and the sun still stays frozen in the sky, uh, you know, a cool air starts to breeze uh, around the circle of the pit, kind of pulling at the smoke and mist in the center, causing it to wisp up and dance in front of you guys. And oh, so, yeah. yes, Rial, you, you know, you're, you're back, you know, leaned up against this three foot tall, white curved, you know, ostensibly a dragon's tooth, uh, or at least a statue of one that you that you lean against. You, you feel that cold stone on your back. And uh, you, you're looking over your shoulder, you see the shamanastas and the mercenaries nearest you all seem to be turning toward the Thoricus tide as uh, even across the way, you know, far across from your your vantage point, you see the, the one standing next to a man frozen in stone, staring foolishly down into the pit. And you see his, his ally still, you know, next to him. Dwarf, 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 as the chance of Thoricus, you know, the boom of Tina's voice, Thoricus, you know, it shakes the sky right. and, and adds to that oh, yeah. swelling beat as the wind blows around you. So Rial, in this moment, you know, your bow in your hand, what do you do? All right, so I'm right next to the dragon tooth, which is pretty damn close to the pit, correct? Correct, yeah. I mean, you, you're you basically like, it would be a five foot move to like be at, over the edge going down. You know, you don't have like Brenor is climbing down the remnants of the, you know, the crumbling remnants of the hanging bridge that was blown apart uh, in the midst of the, of the, the Rakanasta. And so you, you, you know, right now it's just like a stone, you know, a bunch of hewn stones that go down the side. You know, various little jets and stuff where you'd want to try to climb down uh, or stuff like that. You know, you, you have options as far as that is concerned. Wonderful. Options That's nice. good to know. I uh, I did spy Brunor starting to descend the pit, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take out my dagger and try and find those spots between the stones to kind of hobble my way down. Don't know what our plan is yet, but after all those unsavory noises, yes. I want to be down there too. Okay. So this is going to be an athletics check. Now the pit with your, you climb at half of your movement speed, so you could move about halfway down. Okay. Um, you know, you wouldn't reach the floor. But with an athletics check, this is basically to see if you're able to climb down the wall or if you fall off, you know, as, as you oh. try to reach for the stone, you know. Uh, so go ahead and give me an athletics check. It doesn't look good, guys. You <laughs> so, might be an 18. The no, that is good enough. <laughs> All um, right. So with, with an 18. Good enough. You know, what's hilarious <laughs> is your strength is so bad that you rolled a 19 and it ended yeah. up at 18. So, you know, you oh. kind of come down and feel your feet oh. set on little pieces of, you know, the corners of the hewn stones that stick out. And you, you're managing a pathway down. It's not fast work. You know, you, you don't want to fall and into Lord knows what as you climb down into the smoky, foggy darkness. Um, but you manage to, you know, as you start to slide, you see your knife <laughs> catches into just, a, a, just the right hook. And your other hand slides off. And for a moment, you almost <laughs> fall back, <laughs> grabbing back on and pulling yourself on. You're about halfway down the wall. Actually, you're about All 10 right. feet from, from the floor, but you are climbing down. Um, are you, and so uh, again, averting your eyes is a weird thing. It's not a condition that happens a lot in, in Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. but in this case, um, it is, uh, 
it, it's it's applicable. So it, you're gonna have certain disadvantages if you are averting your eyes, if you're trying not to look at something that you don't necessarily know where it is. So is that something that you will be actively doing is averting your eyes or will you just kind of like stare straight at the wall for now? I'm gonna go ahead and avert my eyes, but instead I'm gonna just uh, tear off a piece of cloak and blindfold myself. Ooh, and nice. I'm hoping that my uh, enhanced elven hearing can at least help me kind of gauge what's going on down there. Yes, your perception, oh, uh, your, your heightened perception will certainly help. And who doesn't look dope wrapping a, a torn <laughs> piece of cloth around their head? You know, Rial, you, you, taking, you know, after this moment where you almost fell off, you're like, oh, but it's important that I look <laughs> super dope. And you take both hands off of the wall, tear a piece of cloak, and wrap it. <laughs> Tightening it. So yes, yes, you are Brandon. He will not be able to see. That will significantly decrease his chances. Let's see how this plays out. It's a bold move, Cotton. He'll look good. Um, <laughs> All right. So Rial, your turn is over. At the top of our popcorn initiative, you have many options. Who would you like to throw it to? Oh, oh cripes. Um. <laughs> oh. Go Brunner. Brunor, perfect. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I want to get in. I'm ten in now, feet right? down. You are 10 feet down, and in order to drop you know, the, the rest, you can either take an athletics check and try to climb the rest of the way, or you can just mm -hmm. drop. Now, uh, uh, there would be 1d6 damage. You would make an acrobatics check to see if you took half the damage, or you could proceed to use your action to kind of climb down the rest of the way. It would depend on how you want to I'll play it. I'll climb down the rest feet? of the way. Okay, give me an, uh, give me a, yeah, every 10 feet is 1d6 uh, falling damage. Um, so go ahead and give me an athletics check. Okay. Here I go. I'm almost 40 and I would still chance a 10 foot drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you're not, you're not actively engaged with anything right now. So you, you uh, the, uh, the 12, unfortunately, is not enough to pass the easy. Uh, but you're, you're not climbing down a ladder, you know, you're climbing down <laughs> jetted stone walls that stick out. <laughs> Trying to find little grooves and crevices for your hand, and you know you're you're a person who spends most of your life on a boat at sea. You know, not a lot of time climbing up the crags of mountainsides. You know, whereas Thoricus maybe has done a lot of that in his youth. Um, but uh, yeah, so you unfortunately, you know, as you as you reach and slide, you feel your foot slide off and your fingertips. You know, kind of a little bit of arthritis. You know, from that twenty uh, extra years. Welcome, welcome to almost forty. As strong. Boom, and your fingertips slide off the tip of the brick, and you kind of feel your face grate against the brick on your way oh. down, and you fall. One d six. Give me, uh, give me a, a dexterity saving throw. You will take half of this if you, you pass. Seventeen is more than enough. Uh, so Hell you take yeah. two damage, Renor. You, t you know, and you fall. Now, since you fell and you didn't get the benefit of the athletics check, you still have an action and a move right now. What is it? What Hell like? yeah. Um. Okay. <clears throat> So I fall. It's very embarrassing. I kind of kind of hit the ground, um, but I I fell because I looked over and I saw Riel do the thing around his head, and I was like, "That's a really good idea." So I started looking around at like maybe what I could do to like do something around my head, and then I started getting in my head like, "Shit!" But if you look and don't look, because then you're gonna see her, and that's why I fell. <laughs> <laughs> and you just like slowly like, "Oops!" Yeah. Oh, I just fell. Yeah. Yeah. Solid hands yeah. so like counting all the options and you fell right. down. Yeah. So um so I need to find I wanna find something to tie around my uh, my eyes, but I'm close but my eyes are closed. <laughs> All right, so you close your eyes, which makes it hard to find the thing to cover your yes. eyes with. It yeah. sure will. And, and you reach back. So yeah, you can you can tear a piece of fabric. You're certainly strong enough. Cool. Uh, if, but you know, you will have a torn bit of whatever. So where would you like to tear this bit of fabric from? I don't have anything. That's the problem. <laughs> I think I have his armor. You've got like under, you know, like your clothes underneath and stuff. You under can, like, armor. You want to, yeah, nice you want to take like, like the padding around your knee or something like that. You know what I mean? Like some piece of, of you can. You, you gotta can tear it off. The you have a bag with you. Every movie you know, your ever. Bag is <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I gotta tear. I'm gonna tear it off some Rip thigh, off the, the thigh thing, and then I'm gonna don't you have, like, tie eight it around. Pouches. <laughs> I do. Nice. Oh yeah! I'm gonna, I know what I'm gonna do. I have so many. I have so many things. I have the satchel. That's just an empty satchel. So I'm gonna yeah. tear the satchel and I'm gonna make a 
the face covering out of it. Perfect. Utilizing the resources at your disposal, you reach into your bag and find <laughs> that empty satchel, and you <laughs> tear it, you know, leaving it wide enough at both sides to reach back and tie it. Both you and Rial look. It's a bag in a bag. Yeah. It's <laughs> an obscene amount. Of <laughs> I like doing color themes. Like Rial's is kind of green for whatever reason. Bruno, or yours is like that dope sea kelp, you know, color. Um, it's, it's very, you, you both look very dope. Hey. Uh, yes. And so we know that's the main objective in D&D is dope looking. Um, oh. I'm going to delete you here and move you over to here. Uh, where, who's up next, Brenner? When you're done with your turn, who are you sending that bad, that energy uh, to? Damn it. Yeah. Um, so from my view up top, like I can, I'm, everybody's kind of looking into the, into the pit, but not like, staring down there like dumbasses right. like the people who got frozen <laughs> yeah, who turned this down. Yeah. okay but do do i have like any kind of rough idea of where the medusa might be like which half she's in or like anything um give me a perception check okay so you hear the chattering of the snakes you know that you've heard throughout the encounter um you hear the cry of malka out, but again, it's through this cloudy, smoky dust. With your 16, you would know that from where you're standing, she is on the far side from you. Gary Larson, the far side. Okay. Nice. Now, you don't uh, know how far down, though. You know, it's like you, you you can't see into the pit. You don't know the dimensions of the pit. You just happen to know that she is placed, you know, not too far down because you can hear her. So, you know, but down on that side of the pit. All right. And so you this do, is... For a lot of your spells, you have to see the thing you're targeting. So you know. Okay, so um, let me double check this before I make myself look stupid. Then <laughs> it doesn't matter because Jake is just happy as shit for you. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me do happy. Okay, no, this is what I want to do. Jake got okay. turned to stone. No. <laughs> Jake is stoned as fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, not the only one. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting really high tonight, guys. This is a new threshold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, oh man. I got, I got some durbin poison, which is Food like. Hmm. So here, here's what I want to do. Divot in his inner monologue is like, "All right, we're thinking in this terrible accent because we're committed to this mercenary character." <laughs> it's okay, it's not Love it. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rip off this fucking beautiful purple piece of uh, tapestry that I have, and I'm gonna light it. With, with with my light ability and I'm going to throw it as hard as I fucking can down into the pit in the direction of where that bitch might be. I don't know. Alright, I like I don't, you feel I like the, to the, you feel the swirling right. wind. <laughs> you feel that swirling wind of the rock up blowing around you and you take the moment, you know, again, a very high charisma, glamour bard. You let the breeze, you know, almost carry the cloak off your shoulder as you move your finger around with great alacrity and release it as it flows and flaps into the wind. As your hand starts to glow with this bright white yellow light that seems to pool into the fabric of the tapestry made by the elven seamstress Ildessa and the gold you know the gold tassels at the tip start shining like little stars it gleams with light behind you you throw it before you uh, give me a strength check. Let's see how far you can throw this. You know, you're not dumb enough to just, like, lob it lily-nilly. You kind of ball it up and try to get, you know, some good Wouldn't distance. Wouldn't it be, like, more finesse, like, dexterity <laughs> instead of, like, strength? Because um, it's, like, a flowing a object? Distance. But, yeah, I mean, if he wants to say he's targeting something, I would, I, yeah. I would oh, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to argue. I'll definitely I'm not do arguing. That. It's just I know he doesn't have a whole lot of strength, but he's very dexterous, so it's just... I would say in this case, he's not making an attack. He's just trying to throw something far, and that, to me, would be a strength check. All right. Now, if he was trying to throw accurately, his dexterity would come up. All right. All right. All right. Good luck. A little boy. Oh! Yeah, nice. Okay. So that's that's good enough, man. So I'm going to say that basically you can get a solid... 30 feet forward, you know, and you're, you, since you're up and above that trajectory kind of leans out and lands a little farther. So there will be a glowing bright white light kind of laying, let me switch over to the other, the bottom half here, uh, almost, right. honestly, uh, um, uh, Thoricus landing almost directly beside you, you know, this glowing tapestry. Oh, 
land, lands, it kind of lights up. You yeah. know, and, and as the wind of the rock kind of clears the fog and the smoke, this light is again kind of helping you see your surroundings. You notice tall statues looming all around you, some even farther than you'd seen before. You know, as you, as you, you know, prevent yourself from looking behind you where you feel this dominating presence. Um, you know, you feel the warm light of Dibbit's magic <laughs> land at your feet as you hear the sound of the drums playing this song that instills you with this fury. You know, you hear uh, Malka still kind of uh, fighting and straining against this this rock transformation. Um, but uh, and he still does seem to be alive for what it's worth. He's not he has not yet been turned to stone. Uh, but yeah, and it illuminates the area. Um, Divot with where you're standing. Uh, do, are you trying to uh, are you trying to avert your eyes, or are you trying to look down and see if you can see her down there? Um, I, I I I don't. I definitely don't want to look at her. Okay. Um, so you you know you throw the light, boom! It does land. It does. Uh, uh, Thoricus, it had you know the booning effect that it had on you. Um, but as far as other than that. Um, that's about the extent of, you know, if you, if you, like I said, if you want to take the risk of looking in there, you could see if it had more effect. But you do know, you, you, you gave it a real good throw, and uh, it, you, you would imagine it landed pretty close to the center of that room, offering light, a light source in a dark place, uh, perhaps making it harder to hide. So, definitely a positive advantage to, to what you did. Thanks. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, uh, I'd also, like, just the last thing for my turn, I'd like to yell, like, almost as rare as you! <laughs> All right, you call out again. Um, let's see. Let's. Uh, so you're a you're a proficient bard. Give me another performance check. Perhaps <laughs> this time, rather than trying to fight the beat of this this swelling uh, uh, moment, perhaps you join in and try to you know adjust your song. I'm trying. Yeah. Trying to I swear, this never happens. Don't look at this. Okay. 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 There we go. Yeah. All right, with a 12. Still, you know, you, your words, you know, echo down there and perhaps cut through the wisping fog. But uh, you don't, you know, you don't elicit that magical effect. You see, again, the energy of your words kind of mixes with the, fir- the whirling Whoa. fog and smoke of the pit, but doesn't seem to pierce below it. She's not picking up what I'm putting down, folks. <laughs> in there. She's not smelling what you're stepping in. <laughs> All right. So Dibbit, Dibbit, left on your side, you have Tenna and Thoricus. On the enemies, you have uh, the Shamanastas, the Mercenaries, and Malka, the Fury. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let Thoricus go. All right, Thoricus, you are up. We have to work on our signals. I was trying to tell you to let them go first. <laughs> I was like, oh, 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 yeah, I was like, you're doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Just let that just let so, that. Ah, uh, no, it's me. It's me. All right, Thoricus. So you, stand, All right. you stand. You stand in the base of this pit. Um, the, uh, the the hissing, chattering. You can feel almost the faint, soft tickles of the little tiny tongues that are rumored to hang about the hair of this legendary monster. You know, you swear you can feel the tickling of them at the back of your neck. You hear Malka ah, straining against whatever dark magic has been bestowed upon him, and you feel the swelling darkness of energy behind you. What do you do? Uh, well, I, I guess I'm going to do something I'm not very good at, and uh, for the <laughs> you guys know I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to try to talk to the Medusa <gasps> and... Oh, ask her to show Killer? mercy. <laughs> no, ask her to show mercy on uh, Malka. Take some part of him that's already been turned, but you know, show mercy where he wouldn't have shown you. <laughs> Become more than the beast that they say you are, and help us in our cause. I'm gonna try to be diplomatic, and Ooh. I smell a failure in my oh. future, but. You know what? Let's roll them bones. So I'm not gonna lie to you, Drew. This this difficulty is gonna is pretty high. But uh, <laughs> what 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 you are basically trying to accomplish is to change the intent of this malicious creature. 
yes. at your at your bequest. So let's uh, let's see it. Let's you see can do all. it. What 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 I have to what I have to do? That's this, funny. This is gonna be. Oh my god! <laughs> You're not deceiving her. You are trying to persuade her. Persuasion. So, persuasion. Yeah. Oh come on! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck beans! So I tried your, so hard with your six no. that, uh, that you rolled, which is mm. uh, not not you know you did great. Yeah, you, you feel <laughs> I, you you feel this shadowy presence that you know you kind of have your hands out you know you're you're, you're showing a non-aggression <laughs> to this creature and you, it's just you, hard for me right yes and your hands are shaking mm. and it's so hard for you that you're terrible at it so you're like um I say that it's gonna be terrible at it though yeah so you uh <laughs> you you, you, know, you have your hands and, and, and you're struggling to to fight this intention that you, you want to just turn and slugger but please please <laughs> let, let me let, let, let us let us just stop this. You hear? Shh. He showed no such restraint as he tortured me for years. No mercy. No mercy. Is, is it still me? Your action is used. You have a move. You have a bonus action. Or you can pass your turn to either the Shamanas, the Mercenaries, or Tina, or Malka. Just tear his head off or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. No, I, he said I just use my action, so I can't really yes. do well, anything. Okay. So, <laughs> can I? Can I let the Medusa know that I mean her no harm at this point, and I'm not going to move because I trust that she can understand that I'm not here for her. And I also don't want to invoke an attack of opportunity. You see Thoracus as you're, you know, <laughs> stout. As I'm averting my eyes. She's like, yes. what? Yes. As, yeah, you know, she's, you feel that presence behind you as you hold your hands out and, you know, have a hard time with your with your persuasion of her. Not, not really sure the words to appeal to someone's compassion. What? Like, when would you have ever done this in your life? I wouldn't. You know, like, it's like you're writing your first poem, and it's, you know, awesome. you, think, you think you're doing pretty good, but the girl that's reading it doesn't want to date you. So, um, oh. you know, she, she you, you, you put your hands down, you know, your small, stout, strong, dwarven hands, you put them down to your side. And, and put yourself basically in an, you know, with her at her back, with at your back, you as a battle master know, you've literally just made yourself entirely vulnerable. Absolutely. And so that does have some effect of which you don't know because it's not her turn. So Thoricus, um, she wants to smash. I knew it. <laughs> right, so that was, we'll say that was your move, um, that additional dialogue that rather Thank than move, you. You, you put your hands down and uh, continued to a- a- appeal uh, to her nature. Now, seemingly not necessarily winning her over now, but you know, every every effect. See what happens. Exactly. I mean, no so, uh, and you know, or she rips your heart out through your the back of your body, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what that's happens. That's been ha- that's happened before, and I see here I am. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no kink shaming. So no, no, no kink shaming. Who do you send the moment to? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Malka. Yeah, Malka. let's see what he's got. Mm. So Malka, you know, we as the, uh, as the, as the, uh, the, uh, you know, the raging Malka the Fury uh, seems to be fighting with all of his will. You know, none of you guys see this, but we, the, uh, the the observers get to know that he is currently, half of his body is frozen in stone, but he seems to be raging and fighting off the other half. He gets another saving throw. So all right. Malka. Or, you know, he sees as he, as he cries out with his furious shout that even you, you know, on the outside of the pit, you hear an echo off the stone walls as he fights quite literally for his life as the, the blood in his legs begins turning to stone. Oh. Uh, Cholesterol. Sucks. <laughs> Triglycerides. Is. And roll <laughs> right. a Am I right? Six! Here, 
as the raging fury of Malka the Fury, not to be too redundant, echoes through the furious walls. fury. So so loud is it that in the moment it feels like the sun that's frozen in the sky shakes in response as this great cry is literally squeezed out of the body of Malka the Fury. Ooh. As his blood and skin turn to stone, as the air that's left in his lower parts is pushed all the way up and out as his upper body turns to stone, pushing the air in one final warrior's cry. He cries out, his, you know, his underbite jaw with his hooked teeth and his horn pointing straight up and out of the pit. As you hear the sound. I really don't want to waste my action surge, but can I just be like, homie, I'm going to take your axe before it, like, he's all the way stone? <laughs> Are you going to action surge and be like, yo, look at that axe. <laughs> Bro, I know you're not going to be here much longer. I'm going to take that axe. <laughs> Yeah, you good? Yeah, we good? We good? We good? All right. We ain't good. Oh, too late. Uh... All right. So the uh, the Malka <laughs> is going to pass it off to you, Tina. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. Well, mostly I want to shield my eyes. First thing, I want to avert my eyes. I'm gonna put my face in the crook of my little elbow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think there's much else I want to do. I just want to hang back and see what happens and be ready for the action. Okay, yeah. so let me uh, just make sure I've dropped Rialan over here. I hadn't, so I'm glad I did. Um, hey. hey. Back over here. All right, so uh, Tina, you you know you're you're pretty close to to Divot, and you still have. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you still have the Fury, don't you? Oh yes, I do. Yes. Okay. So you know, you see, you're you're still kind of sitting there, just holding this giant, heavy, you know, like I said, hundred pound plus axe. You know, and only because of your your pretty tough, stout frame are you able to kind of hold it up. You know, wielding this in battle seems nearly impossible. And you watched Malka, you know, move it around like a hot knife through butter with one arm. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like mm -hmm. it's just beyond you right now that the sheer might of this the heft of this weapon, you know, you couldn't imagine being on the receiving end of it. Um, but you, you continue to, to hold the fury in your hands and, uh, you know, look at the swirling mist in the fog before you, you know, you see uh, Divot at your side, um, all all of you just kind of caught in this in this in crazy moment. Uh, the, the next two initiatives continue through the shamanasas and the mercenaries who continue the same. Uh, you see that, that, that the, the, the sounds and these echoes and these cries have, have been reverberating and, and, and they've just been feeding off of it like the rock as the wind blows stronger. They too are almost in this frenzy where they don't seem to be like registering that Malka's cry was just quieted. You know, it's they seem really just in that dance that you saw them in before and their eyes start rolling in the back of their heads and they're just blowing around in this breeze. It's 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 kind of beautiful in it, you know, in its presentation of just this like soft breeze and these flowing garments and you know people transfixed and lost in this drum beat that you can feel in your bones. Uh, so yes, yeah, so with them being done, we go to the Medusa. All right, let me, let me drop us into that. Sorry, I'm a bad cameraman. Guys, if I die, I just want to say it's been really fun. That's not an option. You're not dying. Not today. We will put you on the front of our carriage like a little Rolls Royce dwarf. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds Thank good. You. Medusa speaks. What would you have of me, dwarf? Would you leave me in these depths? Do you come for my blood? I can smell your curse. What, what would you give me to spare your lives? Again, you feel the soft tickles of at least a dozen snakes <laughs> tickling at the back of your neck. Even you and your strong fortitude, this moment is... A bit yeah. daunting. You feel Fuck that. snakes. <laughs> yeah, you feel Next. like creeping in. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I, Tom, I tell you, it. dwarf, I am hungry. So long have I suffered. Please, come 
compel me. Tell me what you offer me. And you feel the soft trickles of the tongues on the sides of your neck. You can feel the snub noses of a dozen small snakes tickling the back of your hair and dragging across your skin. And the Medusa (laughs) is done. Rial, you're up. (laughs) So I'm I'm halfway down. How much longer is it to uh, to the ground? Ten more feet. You could uh, you could either climb the rest of the way down, which would be half of your move. (laughs) Um, with an athletics check, you could just jump down and do an athletics check for half of that damage, or uh, you could just chuck, jump and try chuck, something. Chuck, you know, do... oh, yeah, you're about ten feet. You went <laughs> down about fifteen. You're still ten feet from the ground, and it's like that would take twenty feet of your movement to if you climbed down. Okay, you said athletics check. Yeah, athletics to climb the rest of the way down, and then you would still have ten feet of movement and your action. Mm. You can use, this could be your cunning action, using it as a dash, basically, to climb down. Right. Uh, so you do fall. On four, oh, no, that's, that's that's my other roll. I'm sorry. I still haven't seen your roll. Here we go. Boom. Oh, go. that's a natural 20, baby. <laughs> Chris, what? Hey, oh. Yeah, his 19 is a natural 20. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, sorry, crit hit, guys. We got roll. Wow. Dude. I only need to clean this thing. It was weird because I was like, I don't think I'm high enough right now. <laughs> Same, I just happened to be taking a hit. All right, so with a crit, man, yeah, you drop right down. Boom, you're, you're able to do it with that knife that's dragging. You know, you, you drop your hands and feet off the rocks and almost drag your knife <coughs> with your body weight as you slide down the remaining 10 feet. <laughs> so, yeah, you're down. You have some movement. You're right there. Um, I, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I have you guys in the right place. Yeah, you're right here. Uh, by the the corpse of the disemboweled uh, statue man, you know you look at as as you kind of look at the dust around your feet, you see f- stone frozen entrails leading, you know, toward the center of the room from where you're at. But with your eye, you, you don't see this. I'm sorry, because uh, you have your bandana <laughs> on. But you see, you know, through that little crevice at the bottom where your feetsies are. Um, and so yeah, you, you know, there's there's definitely some statue or something nearby you. But you are blindfolded and awesome. Right on. Bullshit. Am I able to speak out to the Medusa? You are, yes. Awesome. Yeah, I'm not trying to fight right now. So I want to beckon out to her and uh, say, Mighty Medusa, we we do not come at you with violence. I'm, I'm an ally of Thoricus, and I too spent seven years imprisoned. I understand the pain that you must have felt at your captors all these years. Please, we mean no harm, and we wish to bargain with you, and... If we can grant you freedom, I promise you will enjoy it as much as I have had with these people that I come here with. See, at at the word, the mention of freedom, she... Freedom. Give me a persuasion check, Rial, with advantage because of Thoricus's feigning display. Thank you, best friend. (laughs) You know, sometimes you just gotta know when to hold them. <laughs> no one to follow. All right. Here we Here go. Come. Seventeen. Good enough. Oh, good enough. <laughs> well, for a skill check, this is a. It's not over. Oh, Jeez. it's never over. Ah, oh, Chris. <laughs> Freedom, you say? For what? What are your conditions? It's still your turn, Rian. You can reply. Okay. For blood. Not to kill, just your blood. My friends and I have been afflicted with a curse, and we've been told that your blood is the only cure. We can procure just some of it. We would be happy to offer you freedom if we can. That we shall. Seems right, yeah. <laughs> Seems so, fair. Uh, Rial, give me an insight check. <clears throat> yeah. Insight check. She's All right. Sh- she might be full of shit. Yeah. 
Oh, let's see. <laughs> A 15 is good enough. You are oh. not necessarily <laughs> buying this. That seems a strange request when she with her blood seems right there. Um, you do get the, uh, you know, again, even you not looking at this beast, hearing her voice, knowing the legend of the Medusa. This is, this is an evil creature. You know, whether or not her plight makes her deserve being in a pit for, you know, 30 years, uh, that is to be morally disgust but she the, the at her core you feel the the dark energy that's with you in this you know claustrophobic pit as the smoke and the fog kind of wraps around you and you hear the snake sounds echoing off the walls so you i would say with your insight you uh you do not necessarily think that she's being entirely honest with you can i still go yeah yeah, the encounter's kind of on pause right now. This is a All little right. bit of a roleplay moment. My request is collateral. Two vials of your blood. Two vials. I am weak. They barely feed me. My prey turns to stone. loud enough for us to hear it yeah at this point anybody that's in the pit who all's in the pit um can, can hear the this pit? conversation um outsiders of the pit she's not you know it's, she's not booming her voice or anything this is kind of a okay. you know everybody's within 10 feet of each other so there's not a lot of yelling i mean as far as you know divot there still could be combat going on down there yeah I'm like oh a snake <laughs> 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 what do you say? Who, what? I'm, is it to me? Or? As a prisoner myself. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get you the hell out of here. All right, so here's the what? next question. How are you going to get her out of here? You, uh, you do not see her. You still feel her, like I said, that shadowy presence of her on the other side of the statues that you know, are, are on the ground between you and her, unknown to you and your eye guard. Um, but yes, you have climbed down into this pit. Um, how are you going to get her out? <laughs> what? Um, wait, what? <laughs> What's happening right now? Brunor, on the other side of the room, you hear the, the friendly voice of your ally, Brunor, um, shouting from the other side. You know, you guys can barely make her out through the smoke, but the wind is kind of, you know, and the light from uh, the tapestry of, of Ildessa glowing in the room allows you to see, oh, Brunor's down here, too. So you guys have a little bit of a moment here. I mean, uh, Thoricus, you can kind of look directly at Brunor, um, but you guys have your little power triangle here. Um, yeah. So wait, I, I just, I, I don't know if it's going to ruin any kind of illusion or anything, but like, so she wants to get out of here, but we need the safety to be able to get her out of here and she has to sacrifice and we have to sacrifice and whatever. But like, if, if we covered her eyes with a blindfold, would that stop us from getting turned to stone? You want to ask her that? Well, kind of. Okay. So yeah, well, yeah. I just, I just want to make sure. That, yeah. You're gonna ask, like, be like, you know, you, that her gaze. I, uh, I just didn't know. know if it was my turn. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, like I said, we're in a role play mode right now. The yeah. three voices. Yeah, tell her to put on that Gucci I threw down yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, present it to her. Go ahead. Three, your underwear down here. You will, you will free me. You will take me topside. You don't hear as much hissing of the snakes. She seems to be calming. Yes. Yeah, two, it'll be cool. For two, 
vials of your blood, and with this stipulation that three you, vials, three vials. I'm sorry, I. You said two vials. I three. You no, know, I was actually me. on the ground over there before when you guys started. The My conference. bad. There are three of us. I'm just a little concerned. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be here in this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, two. That works. And uh, the blindfold thing, so you can't turn us to stone. You gotta trust us to get you out of here, which I still have no idea how that's gonna happen, but, uh, you know, we, we make shit happen, so... Yeah. Uh, I'm good. The viewers have, have kept you here. You, you haven't been able to explore much of an escape, and we've noticed the ferocity of your claws. Would something like that be able to puncture the stones? Would we be able to crawl out of here? Have I tried? Slips, fingers, weak body, frail. I cannot make the climb. Well, uh, shit. What if we, um, push... How heavy are these statues? Can we, like, push them up against each other to, like create a ramp of some sort or something so yes these stone statues are very <laughs> heavy made of full solid stone Salute. uh There's granite and marble no dust appearance. everywhere marble dust and yes various, Awful. various hewn stones as you can see from the multiple colored ones again with your blindfolds on you know you're kind of just like reaching out into the darkness and you know you feel a, a statue uh, the, 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 they are themselves statues. They are not affixed to the ground. They are several hundred, they're like 400 pound statues. Um, but they they are statues. Movable? Yes. Pileable? A breach of my victims. <coughs> I could never move them. But you dwarf. <laughs> and again, you feel the of snakes on your neck. You seem strong enough. Thank you, first off. Yeah, that's, baby. That's so flattering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you she was trying to smash. She likes the strength. <laughs> like <the> strength. <laughs> Papa's feeling strong. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do the uh, let's do the the stone body pile thing. I'm I'm all for it. Let's do strength check, baby. All right, yeah, so uh, just like to, to gaze on ease. Now, again, just so you guys know, you guys above the pit, all this chaos and, and sound and, you know, the screaming and the crying and everything has come down to almost a quiet nothing. You know, you hear the boom, doo, 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 boom. and it's like they're, they're almost all, all the shamanasas are like looking at each other like, should we keep playing right now? Like, it's very quiet. Everything seems still. They've seen a couple of you guys go in. Um, and you know, every now and again, an echoed snake, you know, uh, sound echoes from within. But the, the the mood right now is very much just. Do, 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 do. Everybody's still kind of bobbing and dancing in that strange, you know, uh, frenetic zone that they get into. So yes, um, go ahead. We uh, my my strong my strengths, folks. Give just give it the three of you can give me a strength. Uh, okay. Save. Uh, I'm sorry, strength check. Uh, athletics uh, is the one that I'm looking for. An athletics check. <laughs> uh, just to move right. these things around. You see the Medusa, you know, even though uh, you hear her crawling around looking for, you know, reaching through rubble, and you hear the ripping of fabric. It sounds like she is, uh, uh, you know, ad ad adhering to her side of the bargain and putting some kind of bandana around her. Um, you hear the tearing of cloth on the other side of the room as she allows you to kind of not worry about her gaze as you go about moving these statues. Um, do you guys want to like say anything or call out or anything or uh, or just kind of start making this statue? I've got a little encouragement before we go. Once we enact this plan and we get you out of here, you're blindfolded. You're not going to stone gaze anyone from this camp. So uh, eat up. That's something to look forward to, right? <laughs> Once more, to hide in a cave of my own design. That is all I seek. I take that. That's art. That's art. Yeah. You know what? Oh. We've all had second chances. We've all been fucked in the past. And uh... she's a snake. <laughs> all right. So, wait, can I? You guys wanna... Yeah. Go ahead. Can Can I um like take a, a couple seconds to like like I I'm, I have like she's blindfolded, right? So. 
I want to like take a couple seconds to like give like a coochie coo to a couple of her snakes <laughs> with like my animal handling. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, I like it. Give it to me. Give me an animal. Good handling. old coochie coo. Yeah, so this might, be... Don't get bit by a snake. <laughs> All right, you you, uh, you know you kind of like reach out, you know, without looking, you know, still kind of. Or, or wait, are you guys you guys take your blindfolds off now that she's blindfolded? Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah. now that you can, you actually get to lay eyes on this Medusa. Mm-hmm. She's this monstrous, mangled version of her former beautiful self. You know, the legend of the Medusa trading immortality for beauty, but as the beauty faded, the immortality did not. Now the lower half of her body has completely transformed into a giant serpent green twisted scale, and the top half of her body resembles the corpse of an old woman. The dull gray skin hangs from a bestial frame. Her eyes glow blue from behind the the bandana that she has, this tan piece of fabric that she's wrapped around her face. You see snakes dangling from her hair uh, with twisted tangles of various different, uh, you know, certain colors of blue and green and yellow dangling and hanging down, at least two dozen. And they hiss and snap at each other and seem to move of their own accord. But her body is emaciated and weak. You see, even the snake of hers is, is a little disheveled and drooping. And but it's but she snaps as she snaps in and out of her movements as she slithers along the east side of the cave. And so, yes, you have you have now laid witness on the actual form of the Medusa, um, a far more monstrous than uh, than the you know beautiful woman with snake hair of, of the legends that you had heard. Mm-hmm. But uh, she seems to be pretty late in her journey and pretty, Ill, like she said, a pretty ill-fed. Um, so yes, this large emaciated creature again, yes, an evil being, but does anybody deserve the treatment to be thrown in a pit left of your own devices in a, in a room alone with bodies cast down on you from time to time? You know, the, the, the morality of the moment you all battle with in this instant. And you see she... S- snakes as you reach your hand out and tickle the chin of some of the snakes you see they don't bite you um but they don't you know you've you've met a few snakes in your day you're the sea serpent yourself um they don't necessarily show you any signs of affection by you know rubbing their warm noses on your wrist or anything but they seem to allow the embrace and they react to the touch individually you see she doesn't seem to respond to the mm-hmm. touch okay cool just checking <laughs> um, so we've been putting these statues yes, together. Yes, you guys have been moving the statues. It takes a little bit of time, and uh, um, you hear from the other side of the room where the Medusa is. Oh you wait, hear... can I pick up the the glowing thing, the glowing scarf? The tapestry, yes. Yeah. The, the, uh, the purple and gold tapestry, you know, weaved by the great elven seamstress Ildessa, yeah. that uh, Divot wears as a cape, uh, that is glowing with light in the center of the floor. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to pick it up and just like throw it over my shoulder. You know, it's got the tassels that hang at each corner and you can kind of tie them to the shoulder parts of your armor. Yeah. Can I see her now? So, yeah, I mean, if you look down, like, you don't, you still haven't been given the all clear, you know what I mean? So, you're, you know, you're standing on the edge. The wind of the rock still blows. You still feel this cool breeze, but a strange stillness as the drums, you know, do, 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 stop. They don't completely stop playing, but they are, you can almost just barely make out the concussive tusk, or touch of the sticks on the drum. As you guys begin moving these statues, you hear a, a little bit of a rustling in the uh, in the gravel area where the Medusa is. You hear a couple pieces of gravel fall. What was that? You guys, um, you guys hear that? Medusa, are we alone? Yes. I was simply adjusting my apologies. Inside check, Brenor. She Uh-oh. farted. Ooh. Fart. <laughs> ah! Whoa, crit! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. So you know that uh, that she is indeed lying to you. She's rustling through something over on that side of the room. <coughs> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you look over and see her massive snake tail, you know, almost trying to sell her line, kicking yeah. the, uh, some of the rocks in the area as she scutters around to the other side of the pit. All right, so I'm, I want to go over there. I want to be like, hey, well, no, what are, Medusa, you tell us what you are doing right now. Medusa. I am saying goodbye. I have been here too long. But each stone has caressed my body in times of weakness. There is a sorrow in my suffering. And she continues, shifting around to the other side. You hear gravel. The tufts, the little puffs of marble smoke, you know, tickle at your nose. You fight off a sneeze. I actually am. (laughs) 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 What's really happening? I want to rustle around. I want to see what she's look what she's looking for. <laughs> All right, you see as you start to, as you begin to walk over toward her, she, her body starts getting into a defensive position. Shh, leave me be. Let me go to the top side. Why do you follow me? Betray me? Do you seek to kill me? I just want to make sure that you're going to make all the right choices once you get up there. Because you're not being honest with me right now. Right. True. I shall tell you, CF. I wish to kill you. I wish to kill your friends, but I do not wish to be here anymore. Let me go topside. And you will never see me again. Of that, you have my word. She better not mean turn to stone and not see your river again, because that's what <laughs> fuck that she does. Oh, man. Right. Oh, dink dink doodle. Oh, man. Oh, shucks. You guys, the, the, the two gentlemen continuing moving the statues, <sighs> you know, you, you managed to push enough debris together that you think you could climb up and reach the rope ladder that Brenor used to climb down, you know, on, okay. the, on the far west side. <clears throat> and so you've, you've managed to, you know, between your concerted efforts moving around, have managed to kind of move most of these statues of these poor frozen people, including Malka and the, uh, and the disfigured, uh, you know, disemboweled statue man, who only now can you see in its true terror, now that you're all able to look around you uh you manage again like you think that uh, if if you were so inclined you could climb up these statues and reach that uh, the rope ladder with with relative ease she still sits uh in, a, in kind of that same defensive pose you know her, her snake tail coiled up around the hanging skin of the old woman that sits with her shoulder you know to to your back you see the soft glow even through the bandana on the on the stone wall just this echoing pale glow All right, well, one of us has to go up first because they need to tell the rest of them or else they're going to attack her. That's uh, what's yeah. up. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, Rial, it's probably best for you to get up there. I mean, should should go south. I think the two, the, the two of us could probably maybe... Yeah. And I can still talk to you while you're up there. Right. Rock that right on. Thinking about that. 10-4, buddy. <laughs> Real, you step up to the statues of these poor, frozen, you know, combatants. You see that sh- the, all of them seemingly died with this look of shock and fear. All except for Malka, whose mouth, you know, still you can almost feel the humming rage emanating from his teeth. And, you know, sharp horn that points up toward the sky. You know, you kind of feel a little bit of shame as you place your hand, you know, just above the back of his neck to hoist yourself up and climb up these assembled statues, you know, and their various weaponry that you've created a, a climbable structure with. You reach up and grab the wooden boards of the, of the bridge and <coughs> manage to pull yourself up. 
you uh, you stand before you're almost directly in front of Divot and uh, and Tina. You know, you hear this the soft and quiet song of of, of your own uh, playing softly in the background. As Rial, you step up and over the uh, the ledge here, face to face with Divot. You, the mercenaries, the shamanastas, <gasps> all come out of their trance, and they stand transfixed. But the shamanastas still play on softly. Divot, I may have gotten us into a bit of a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> so Brunor and Thoricus are down there with the Medusa. We don't quite trust her, but I did promise her freedom. I was hoping maybe she could uh, beat up some of these mercenaries. <clears throat> great, great, yeah. The, the uncomfortable sound of snakes billows from the pit behind him. <laughs> yep. And I'm just overhearing all of this and I'm like, oh, all right, awesome, um, cool, yes. great. There's Tina, still like a bunch of normal mercenaries around, right? You know, yeah. Tina, yeah. And there, yes, all the mercenaries are all kind of, they haven't, they stopped dancing, but that, that little slow rolling drum beat, do, 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 is, is continuing on by the shamanastas. The moment seems strangely sacred to them. This, uh, this... Can I speak to the mercenaries? Absolutely. Malka is down there and he needs your help. <laughs> you need to descend immediately. You need to help your idol, your god of war. <laughs> Get down, boys. He'd be so I proud of you. I boys. <laughs> Bro. Yes. All right. I'm now so proud of you. Booms the voice. Give me a deception <laughs> with advantage, Rial. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> oh, Go get him. Go get him. Lips, boys. Sink ships and all that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, with a three. <laughs> I'm so Jesus disappointed Christ. in you. <laughs> you see, they all, their eyes shift. The shamanasa stops playing the song oh, and begins no. beating the drum of Buraka, the melody you first heard when you arrived. What? They all start playing in unison. You see that all the mercenaries that stand before you, the 10 around the pit, the other 25 and 40 behind them, start humming yeah. this deep chant. Malka's dead. One steps forward. You see he's got a big, long, sharp hatchet at his side. You... Kill Malka. You on Earth. <laughs> you see the mercenaries <laughs> are laughing. What has become of the warrior? Slave. Where is the dwarf? Thoricus. 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 And all the mercenaries um, begin um. chanting in tune. Thoricus, 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 Thoricus! Mm -hmm. And the wave grows. Thoricus, as the sound reaches you, as the breeze of the rock carries it down for you, you feel it almost Sorry. pushing you as you start reaching toward the statues. Do you want to go up first? Or do you want to let the Medusa? What do you want to do in this moment? <coughs> Thoricus. Uh, well, I guess I'll extend my hand as I'm guiding her up and connect hands with who's ever up top and help her up to bridge that gap with these mofos right here. Ooh, breaking out your guns. <laughs> you reach down. But like, you know, showing her, like, look. We're, we're taking a risk here. Yes, like, we're getting you I've here. got you. We're getting you out. Like, just you don't feel, you know, you reach down and her, you know, her arm itself is a human arm, but you feel that old saggy skin, you know, that that you can feel almost like the blood bubbling <laughs> underneath and it, it squishes in between your fingers as you like yeah. clamp down. It's, it's just, it's, it's very, it's, you know, you feel as the skin pulls on her arm as you try to pull her up and it like almost, it's just so close to peeling right off. Ew. But you manage to, you know, kind of get near where her old skin hangy elbow is and you hook her up and you push her up before you. Thoracus! Thora! The fuck? You hear all the drums stop. And 
you see from the side of her hand, she pulls out a dagger and cuts the bandana that covers her eyes. This blue haze washes over you, Divot, and you, Tina. You feel the pale glow. You look down at your feet. You see your feet begin turning to stone. And that's where we'll pick it up next I time, guys. Oh, yes. I knew oh, it. I, oh, my God. Oh, Ooh, getting Shit, stoned. Oh, my God. Boundaries of friendship. <laughs> what? Ooh. Uh, All right. All right, they're mad at me, so we're going to get out of here because I don't that want to be so on camera. Mean. We, uh, oh, yeah, God. yeah, me and Isaac, we are getting a official horse board, uh, and we are going to write our names oh, on it. It'll be a board of awesomeness. Keep, stay tuned for that. Guys, if you're watching this on Twitch, you are the best thing about doing this is watching you guys chat and just hanging out with us and kicking stuff. Hanging out with you guys is one of the best parts about this whole thing. So I love you guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, man, please take it from me one time. Just come down to twitch.tv, Hard Heart Studios. Hop in the chat and tell me it's just not a lovely experience, man. I look forward to it every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. PST here at the Art Heart Studios channel. We are going to be bringing a lot more exciting stuff coming at you guys here pretty soon, so please stay tuned. This cast, this show, the plans that we have have no limit, just like this wonderful game that we get to play. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. We love you, buds. We love you guys. Thank you so much for helping the show, sharing us, commenting, going to all our socials and doing this stuff. You guys are amazing. Thanks to my awesome fucking players because, man, that was a lot of fun. That was just a joy for me to ride. And uh, thank you so much. Again, you know what? To our boys, D&D 420. Thanks for being nice and giving me a shirt that keeps me warm. I'll be sending oh, yeah. you one back. Trust me. <laughs> Buds, you know what we like to do around these parts? Just like we start our official ceremonies, we like to end in the same way. <coughs> our buds already know, but for you new guys, grab those lighters. And let's go, lighters up. Thanks for playing fucking d d with us, guys. We'll see you next week. Ooh. Don't be mad at me. So what? You can't touch me. You're not from the internet. <laughs>